Hey everyone, this is Daryl as a Service Webster on my Saturday morning and some of your Fridays uh, looking at Office 365 Message Centre the week that was the 24th of March. Yeah, I know, I st stop it at uh, a Friday but it kind of kind of fits. Now sometimes I see announcements pop up uh, throughout today because the US is still finishing their day and, and sometimes the Office 365 team uh, roll out some announcements. So what's the idea with this? I've been doing this for a few weeks now. It's all about accountability. I never used to really check the Office 365 Message Center and now that they've put a lot of work into it, it really makes sense for us who have tenants to go in and keep up to date with what's been rolled out to our tenants as well as the announcements and various things that are planned. So, you know, I've been trying to, to spend this time as a way of keeping up to date, but also using it as a platform for talking about stuff that's changing in Office 365, and I try and keep it short. Now, this time around, what I'm trying to do is um, use Periscope. So I have been using YouTube Live, um, that's okay, and I usually um, archive my videos from there, but what I am trying to do is just grab the passing audience, see who's interested. Uh, nice for you to join there. Um, 15 Greg M. But I know I'll get some people occasionally that'll come in from Periscope whether they're interested in Office 365 Message Center or not. So let's get right into it. Uh, we have just a few messages this week and um, sometimes you'll get a bunch of them in here. So just to recap for those who don't go in here often enough, um, we have uh, different types of messages that are um, either about keeping you informed uh, about uh, saying things that are going to be happening within your tenant, so you do have to plan for change. Um, there is some planned outages sometimes. There's, there's all sorts of things like this. So um, what I've got this week around, um, a few messages. Now you notice too that they, they all have a message ID so we can go back and reference them. In fact, what we can do if, we, if we're wanting to share an announcement um, is also get that link. So that link um, is going to push people through to that same message um, within their own message center if you're sharing it. So this is quite useful. Uh, if it's a message that's not going to apply to them, then it's it's not going to appear in their portal, of course. Um, so that's how it works. Now, uh, and actually that's one of the points too. Uh, I know that early on in Office 365, the message center was very um, manual, static. It didn't really apply too much to the um, necessarily your specific tenant so things would get rolled out and you weren't sure whether um, it was going to be arriving in yours soon or um, or whether it was just generally an announcement so now we've got a, a little more um, uh, tailored announcements in here within the message center so let's take a look at this first one now this one is is um, around my uh, subscription for Microsoft Intune. Um, now what I had done was uh, applied to, or rather subscribe to Microsoft Intune to try and have a look at some of the features around controlling apps on, on mobiles. And my goal was to try and make it easier for, for people to um, work from their mobiles, work from wherever they are. And as a company, um, I would want to create a company portal and then send people to the, the portal app so rather than having to go, right, you need to download all these eight apps manually yourself, um, then I'm going to present them to you using some of the tools within Intune. So this this tool, um, what is it uh, advising me here is that that uh, there are some changes, some updates in March, and, and one of them which I was interested in was Microsoft Teams is now part of the um, uh, mobile app management that you can um, apply in different policies. <clears throat> now I am using Microsoft Teams on my on my mobile, so just taking a look at that. Um, the other thing that I've that I've had um, occur in my tenant recently is that it's brought Microsoft Intune um, into the Azure experience rather than the separate um, Intune portal that that uh, we used to have as a legacy. So I've got it now within within Azure, <clears throat> and um, I've gone through to the uh, the Intune app protection. Um, and opened up various different blades here. So we've got the application management. Um, I've gone through to looking at the at the app policies, and this is where you'll find the um, policy that I'm able to create. Oh, there we go. Yep, I've created a policy and been able to um, select from the different applications that that I have published and made available into. Um, into my um, environment. <clears throat> so I've got Microsoft Teams down here. 
Now it means that I can uh, have some control over it appearing in my app portal and some control around how that, that application uh, performs. Uh, some of those um, uh, controls that you have are particularly around things like um, OneDrive and, and Outlook. You can prevent text from being copied and pasted into other applications. Um, you can essentially create that bubble so that you've got your corporate data within the, the um, app policy on your phone. And if that person um, needs to leave or, or is moving on to another job, um, then you can remove that corporate data without wiping their whole phone and wiping all their their photos and various other things that are, are more about their personal data. So yeah, good feature and um, good to see that, that things like Microsoft Teams uh, um, have been added there too. Uh, so yeah, with all of these announcements, of course, you can go through to the additional information. And sometimes these will go through to the blog posts that announce the feature. This one's a, um, a, a blog post or blog posting around um, what's new within Intune. So this is quite a, a regular one there. Nice to see that it'll take them five minutes to read. Um, so some of those other features there are listed too. All right, so we're going on with uh, the next announcement. Um, Office 365 Groups invite to join. Now, if you're using Office 365 Groups, um, just to clarify, <laughs> this is the email flavor of Office 365 Groups. We have Office 365 Groups, which is really the, the concept of belonging to an Active Directory group, and then various different um, resources and services are provisioned around that. And because it rolled out with email to start with, um, the Outlook experience became known as Office 365 Groups. I've begun to call it Outlook Groups myself, so to try and clarify things there. So this is talking about the the, out, the Office 365 Groups invite to join. Do you want to be part of this group? Um, we've got public groups, we've got private groups. We can invite guests in as well. So this this um, invite, uh, let's go through and have a look at that. This one is actually linked through to a, um, a blog post, um, or rather a support article. Now apparently it's only a, a feature that you can do from within <clears throat> the Outlook uh, web access experience. We can't yet go to Outlook 2016 and create an invite link. So here it's, it's got a few of those um, uh, methods of being able to join the group and discover the group, um, invite others to join the group, and this is where we get into the capability of, um, of uh, inviting people via a link. So what does that look like? We'll go through here. Um, open up our mail and find one of our groups. Oops, not that one. Let's get into engineering. Okie dokie. So this this is actually um, I'm not sure about this feature. Groups on your phone. Yes, I've already got groups on my phone. It'd be nice if they detected that already. <laughs> um, it's, uh, let's see, invite others. So we've got a, a familiar looking box that if you have been using SharePoint Online and, and One, OneDrive Online, then you do get this, um, you know, emailing a link, creating a link, um, setting an expiry. Don't know if we want to do that for this kind of um, uh, type of function. But um, we're able to create a copy or rather create that link. And you can see, begin to see the address there to the, um, the group itself. Now, just wondering about this, wondering what you think, but if I'm inviting people to a group, um, I want them to be part of my group, part of my team, um, I'm the person who's forming it, then I would go over and uh, click the invite button, right? Um, I would then add their names, and then they would get an email and a, an intro. Is this fitting the space where um, you are a member of the group but not an owner, and therefore you can't... Um, uh, invite people via adding them as members. I think that's where this space fits in here. So, um, you know, sending this link out, uh, it can be broadcasted out rather than having to create a list of people and adding them all in there. Um, of course, your your um, IT admin um, can go in via the um, Azure Active Directory and add people to the groups. Uh, but this one, I think, is more of a, a pool experience. Um, so you're trying to build together a um, uh, you know, a group of people that you, you want to, to work with on a project or, or get their attention. And uh, you're trying to do it a little more organically by just pushing that link out there and sharing it. So I 
let's see if we can uh, simulate this. Let's go through here, open up a private window. Do, do, do. Might try and uh, No, okay, we'll give we'll give up on that one. Um, in fact, the person I was going to invite was one of my demo users that is already part of the group. So, we'll, we'll, you get the idea. It's a link. It invites people to the group. Um, so yeah, I can see there is some use to that. But um, yeah, we'll see how it plays out. Um, so yeah, on to the uh, last announcement. Uh, we've got a update to the Office 365 profile card experience. So when you're hovering over uh, a person's name within um, various different places of Office 365, then you're going to see a, a profile card. Quite cool, actually, because it gives you a lot of information. The idea being that um, you know wherever you are, you're able to see certain things about a person that might help you to connect with them. Maybe their availability, maybe whether they're online or not. What are the last few documents that they've worked on? Who do they report to? Where, where do they kind of fit in this um in this uh, organization. So we've had that card for a little while. Um, now I will click through to the additional information um, because <clears throat> it's it's a blog post, it's been out there, of course it's been out there, it's been shared by 171 people, um, but it's not something that I currently have in my environment. So I've gone through here um, to OneDrive and um, just to show, if I hover over my Jack Sparrow um, uh, demo user, um, then I'm not quite seeing that updated card yet. I can send him an email, start a chat. Yeah, that's good. What are the, some of the files that he's been recently working on? Um, but I would need to go through to that full delve experience to start to see more of that information rather than it being on the card. Um, so I can see that um, Jack's available all day today. Probably shouldn't be because it's Saturday here. Um, and I can see who he uh, works with as well. So Elizabeth Swan, another student in the class. Um, some of the documents that he's been working on. So that is going to get an update. Oh, where was it? it? Was over here, wasn't it? Introducing that new card experience. Am I using Zoom it today? Nope. Let's uh, zoom on in a bit. Apologies. All right. A little bit easier to see. So we're going to have some tabs. Still going to have send an email, start a chat, so that's cool. Um, but we're going to have some tabs around um, the different information that we can um, view there. And in fact, it looks like we can also um, search the recent documents that they've been working on. It's not just going to be a, a, a little pick there of three or four just to do it as a highlight, but we can go through to their recent files and um, type and filter. So it's going to be quite a full experience, even just from that that um, that card. Now. This is something uh, I guess that it's it's topical because uh, some friends of mine and I uh, in a um, recent broadcast for regarding Office 365, we were talking about um, the place of an intranet and um, how does that all fit into our new collaborative experiences that we have with um, groups, with teams, with Yammer. And um, it's really about, I've read it this way, it's really about the, um, that, uh, attention is scarce and we've got we've got all sorts of services and things fighting for our attention there's notifications there's emails and you know it really it's not so much that something like email is um, you know the the evil part of our lives that is that is drawing all our, our time away but it's more about how it's been used um, by the various different or, um, people organizations um, services that are all trying to get our attention um, and so email is the default uh, but this this is this is really cool if you think about it you've got this card which is there it's right there where you're working if you're working on a document or um, as I understand it it's going to be um, throughout the different services in Office 365 not just OneDrive and SharePoint uh, but you'll have this full experience you can go to that card and go what's Cameron's been working on um, what is his contact information how long is he available for um, during the day? And you know what? One of my um, key pieces of info that I like to find out is where do you live in the world in our company? Um, because I work for a, um, a, an international company and um, often I find, 
forgive me US people, um, but you, you're often thinking about US and your three time zones, but not so much about um, the either sides of the of the world in other directions. So um, I often have to do this uh, myself on behalf of them and say, well, your time is going to be this locally for you. Um, for me, it's going to be here and for our other team members in Singapore and Australia, it's going to be these times. So this is where this card comes in and you might not have seen this um, actually. Have I got an example here? No, I'm not logged into to my workplace here, but you do have a similar feature within Skype for Business where you can go through and um, what it's doing is it's picking up on the regional settings on your machine um, and saying, well, you know, Daryl currently is visiting um, Seattle, so if anyone looks at me within Skype for Business, they're going to see my local time to me and, um, and how long I'm going to be available till. Um, based on my, my calendar. So that's that's pretty cool and I expect that that sort of stuff is going to be in here too. Organizational charts, who does Cameron work for? Um, you know, I need to talk to someone about uh, a certain pro product that we're working on, who, who's actually responsible, who's the program manager, um, all sorts of cool things like that. So we don't have it yet um, in true fashion. You do get some things that roll out um, relatively quickly, click, quickly. And then you'll have some that are um, going to take a little while to come out. And this one, because it stretches across a number of services, so I expect it has to, to build up um, or, or get a few ducks in a row um, before it, it, it turns out. So, yeah, lots of cool experiences there. I recommend that you do have a look at the, the blog um, right there. So back to our, our admin centre. That was the uh, week that ended the 24th of March. Um, sometimes I have a tip at the end uh, of um, of, uh, of the show. I've been a bit lazy and been a full on week, been doing all sorts of things. Um, yeah, some of these tips have been about Microsoft Teams, about groups. I'm really passionate about the productivity side of things. I just recommend that uh, you, you have a go at trying to work a bit more in the browser. Now I know that you know, we do have our applications on our desktop, but the browser has been receiving more and more features and functions that give it, uh, you might say, parity with, with what's happening on the desktop. And as you see here, I mean, one of the, uh, like, I don't expect the profile card to appear within our applications, um, or I don't know when the invite to join for Office 365 groups will appear in Outlook 2016. Uh, the application experience is always going to be behind what happens within the web browser. And uh, I, I feel that, you know, I'm almost there to being able to work completely in the browser. I just need to have Skype for Business up to scratch um, using maybe WebRTC to allow me to, to um, you know, just jump straight into a, to, um, a chat and a video and a shared desktop. Um, who knows what the plans are there? So that was the week that was. This is uh, Daryl Webster as a service. And um, thank you for joining me. Let me know if this has worked out for you via Periscope. It seems that um, when I do it over YouTube Live, it's okay. But um, I'll drag this video and the recording back into my channel there so that um, it's, it's available for others um, afterwards. But thanks for joining me. And we'll see you again next week. Same time next week. Bye for now.